Zotero is a great free open source research tool. It's easy to use and helps you collect, organize, cite, and share your research sources. And it lives right where you work in your web browser. First we'll open Zotero here and we'll select the folder where we want to put our research sources into. And now we'll launch uh, my favorite web browser to do a little bit of research. And we'll go to the Canly site that has a bunch of uh, legal court cases that I'm interested in for my research and we'll type in polygamy BC, do a search for that, scroll down and we'll find uh, an interesting court case that I'm going to cite in my paper. So I'll click on the court case. Here it is, we've got the full text of the court case here. And Zotero has put a little icon up in the, in the bar here. And if we click on that, it's going to save all of the relevant citation information along with the full text of this to Zotero. So we click on that. Down there it tells us that it's saving it. And then we'll go into Zotero. And there's all of the citation information for that case. If we click on the little triangle to the left, it's got a full text PDF and uh, plain text of the, the case that we can uh, search through if we need to. Let's go back to the web browser and there's a New York Times article. Oop. We're going to search for, there's the New York Times article. We'll load it up here. Once the page is finished loading, Zotero puts a little newspaper icon here that we can click on and Zotero will save the citation information back to itself and we can see here here's the citation information for Zotero along with full text of the article. Lastly, we'll go into the catalog uh, for the research library that the university where I work, UVic do a quick search for Polygamy BC. And there's a number of things here. We're going to limit it to books because I know it's a book that I'm going to be looking for. We scroll down, we can see a bunch of books. If there was just one book that I was going to be using, I could just click and go in and then get the citation for that book. But there's three books that I want to use. So on this page, I go up and there's a little folder icon that Zotero's put there. I'll click on that. And it brings up a dialog box with the information or with the titles of all the books. And I can click on, we'll click on three of them here. And when I click OK, Zotero will get the citation information for all three of those books. So if we go back into Zotero, we'll see there's a citation information for all of those books. Now for the full text resources, I can do keyword searches. So I know I'm that one of these articles has the name of the judge uh, that was involved in these cases. And the judge's name was Bauman. So I'll type in B-A-U-M-A-N. And the New York Times article has that name in it. So I'll double click on the snapshot. And what it's doing here, it's not opening up the New York Times website. You can see here it's got the file colon slash slash. That means this is a local cached version of the file of the uh, article, not the website that it's accessing. And if I go Control F and type in Bauman, we can see Bauman, the name Bauman is referenced twice in the article. So the full text search capabilities of, of Zotero can be very helpful while you're doing research. Now let's go over to the paper that I'm writing. Got a few paragraphs here. I want to cite some of the articles that I've uh, captured in Zotero. So I'll put my cursor at the end of the first paragraph. I'll click on the Zotero insert citation icon up here in Word. And it brings up Zotero. I select the correct citation for that. I click OK. And it puts in a footnote and there is the, uh, the footnote that it's created for me in the correct format. Let's go to the end of the second paragraph. Now we'll put in another 
citation. This time we're going to use the New York Times article. I'll click OK. It's put in the, the second footnote there and we look down at the bottom and there's the citation for the New York Times. We'll do just one more, one of the books. Click on the insert citation and click on this one, this book, click OK. And there's the citation for the book. It's got all three of them there. Last thing we're going to do while we're here is, let's say I've finished my paper, I want to create a bibliography. I'll go down to a new page here. Um, to create a bibliography with Zotero once you've inserted your footnotes is simple. I've got all my foot my three footnotes in. I go up here to the insert bibliography icon. I click on it and automatically Zotero creates my bibliography for me. If I, after this point, put in a, a footnote or two more, I can go and update that so it'll reflect all of the footnotes. Save you a lot of time at the end of your paper in terms of citing and uh, getting your bibliography done. So, lastly, um, if you haven't done so already, I'd encourage you to install Zotero. Um, and we can do that at the Zotero website. And I'll just go over that quickly. So if you open up your web browser, go to zotero.org. Oops, got to spell it right. Click on the Download Now button. And then click on the Zotero 3.0, in my case for Mac, but they have Windows versions as well. Click on that and then install the Zotero application. After that, you also need to install a plugin for your web browser. In my case, it's Chrome, but if you're running Safari or Firefox or Internet Explorer, you'll be prompted to install the plugin for your web browser. And after that, you're ready to go. The Zotero for Mac installs the plugin for Microsoft Word for me. Uh, and so I'm up and up and running after those two installs. So uh, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and install Zotero, uh, the standalone app as well as the plugin, and then maybe open up a paper you've, you're writing right now or have written recently. Look up some resources on the web, some things you're going to cite in your paper, uh, capture them in Zotero, and then insert the footnotes a couple of footnotes and create a, uh, a test bibliography and see how it goes. Good luck!